So how do you start a youth ministry? Here's the way it goes in so many churches. A group of people are standing around and somebody says, you know what, we really should do something for the young people. Yes, yes, the church is getting a little bit older and we need to reach the next generation. Uh, there's lots of young people in the area. We've got some here at our church. What will we do? I know. Why don't we start a youth group? Yes, church down the road has a youth group. We should have a youth group too. What will we do at the youth group? Well, let's do things that teenagers would like. Let's, you know, activities. It's got to be stuff that would attract them. So how do we find out what teenagers like? Let's ask them. Let's get them to tell us what they like doing, and we're going to come up with a great church youth group. And that's the way it happens so many times. A youth group is started, and there is no plan. Nobody actually knows what they're meant to achieve. Nobody knows what the results are meant to be. Like when you get to the end of the year and you look back and you try to think, like, are we getting there? Are we achieving what we set out to achieve? If you haven't got a plan in place, then you have no idea what it is that you're looking for. And one of the biggest dangers of launching a youth program is you get a great idea, you run with the needs, and before you know it, you've got a program that never had a plan. Because does it, does it make sense? If, if you haven't got a plan, you're not going to achieve anything. But let's go one step further. If you've only got a human plan, you'll only end up with a human result. Can I chart for you the way it tends to go? And I want to suggest there's sort of two ways that you can start to have a youth program at your church. Let me draw a few things up here on the board and you'll see how it works. You've got to have a starting point. And so often it goes like this, what do the youth want? What could we do that would help solve the problems of youth? And lying behind this is the message, we have the ability to solve the problems of youth. So you do, you do a survey, you get high schoolers to list what their needs are. Our local council does this from time to time. I can tell you what the results are to save you putting the survey on. High schoolers want all those words starting with F. They want fun, they want food, they want festivities, they want football, <laughs> and they want transport to get there. If you're not careful, you simply start with our ideas. We have a great plan. We have the answers. We can do something for youth. Now, let me tell you what that will lead to. Because you're gonna try and find out everybody's needs. What do they want? Well, you've got to look at the needs of, of the high schoolers. That they, they want activities, they want fun, they want something that you know, they'd really feel cool at. And so you've got to keep the activities coming, you keep it outrageous, you keep the outings, you've got to make it attractive so they keep coming. But they're not the only people with needs. You've got parents and they've got some needs. They want somewhere nice and safe for little Johnny to have wholesome fun. And so it's got to be safe. You've got to sort of tone it down a bit so that the parents have confidence in you. But there's other people with needs. The, the pastor of the church has needs. He wants to have young people in church and for them to sit quietly uh, when he preaches. And you've got parish councillors or elders or deacons or somebody like that that need to fill in statistical reports and they want to put in that the numbers are growing. And of course, you've got your own needs as a youth leader. You don't want to be running some small show that doesn't affect anybody. You want to be successful. And what you end up with is simply meeting all those needs of all those people. I'll tell you where that leads you to. It leads you to um, a goal 
your goal actually becomes to keep, keep everybody happy. That you've got to make it outrageous enough so the kids keep coming. You've got to make it safe enough so that the parents are happy. You've got to make it spiritual enough so that the minister is happy. And you've got to make it successful enough so that you feel like you're on a, on a winning show and you're doing something good. That means your program is going to end up simply trying to meet needs. Trying to make sure that everybody is happy. And if you're not careful, you will just race around and kill yourself. Trying to keep the kids happy, trying to keep the parents happy, trying to keep the pastor happy, trying to keep your leaders happy, trying to keep your own needs looked after. And if you end up with a youth program where you're just burning yourself out, trying to meet everybody's needs, can I suggest what the result will be? The result will be fruitless. And if you've ever got into that trap, you'll simply end up with tired youth leaders. You'll end up with discouraged youth leaders. And can I suggest you'll end up with unfaithful youth leaders? Because if you're running yourself into the ground trying to keep everybody happy, you'll just want to feel good for a moment to escape it. And the evil one will put a suggestion in your mind as to how you can take a shortcut to feeling good. Can I suggest another way to start and run a youth ministry? This wasn't, one doesn't start with our ideas, it starts with God's ideas. That is, we look into the scriptures and we think, what really matters to God? As you immerse yourself in the Bible more and more, you get to know God's heart and you get to know the sort of things that he is after. When you get into the scriptures, you discover the real needs of youth. And you know what they are. They need to be saved. They need to be shepherded. They need to be discipled. They need to be nurtured. And if you understand that the real needs of youth is to come to Christ, then you'll end up with a goal that actually is a biblical goal. You'll end up with goals like evangelism. You'll end up with goals like discipleship. You'll end up with goals like shepherding. You'll end up with goals like equipping and releasing. Because your biblical goals will come from the real needs of youth, which is to be faithful disciples. That means the program simply answers this question, what will best help you achieve your goals? What program can we run that will biblically help you achieve your biblical goals? And that means the result you get from that is genuine biblical fruit. That is, you will raise up young people who will be faithful disciples, who will go and reproduce that into the life of the friends they meet. I like to call this first one here a me-ology. And the second one is a fee-ology. But does it make sense? If you only come up with a human plan, you'll only come up with human results. If you can come up with a biblical plan, you will come up with biblical results. So, how do you come up with a biblical plan for your youth ministry? See you next time.